Good morning from the World Ophthalmology Congress in Barcelona, Spain. We're pleased to be here today with Dr. Farzad Hafezi from Zurich, Switzerland. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. Farzad, I, I am uh, very in excited to hear about your session because I understand that you are describing a potential linkage between thyroid disease and keratoconus. Can you explain for us what you mean by that? Uh, yes, absolutely. We were very surprised to see this also. In, in fact, it started a few years ago when we dove more into the effect of estrogen, so into the effect of hormones. And then mm -hmm. we went into literature and uh, found papers from the 1930s, 40s and 50s showing a relationship between thyroid hormone and the cornea. Applebaum in 1936 uh, published a survey of ophthalmology article showing that patients with keratoconus show clinical signs of hypothyroidism. Um, and almost 80 years later, there is an epidemiological study by Thanos in Germany, indeed showing that the incidence rate of hypothyroidism in keratoconus is 10 times higher than in the normal population. So this was mm. hint one. The second hint was that looking back into old literature in the 1950s, um, there were reports on the occurrence of keratoconus, late onset keratoconus um, after thyroidectomy. And Brad Wendelman has published a, a paper just a few weeks ago in the JRS showing that a 53-year-old woman with good vision throughout her entire life, 2020 vision, all of a sudden develops massive stage 3 keratoconus within months mm -hmm. at the age of 53 after, um, after ablation of thyroid function through uh, radioactive therapy. So mm -hmm. all these hints led us to believe that the thyroid hormone may play a much greater role than we mm -hmm. thought. So, uh, Farzad, are you uh, suggesting that in terms of clinical practice, should we be screening patients who have hypothyroidism for keratoconus routinely? And conversely, should we also be referring patients with keratoconus to their primary care, uh, primary care doctor or, or endocrinologist to have screening for thyroid disease? How, how does it play on both fronts? Um, this is exactly what we are looking into now, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Is it? Does it make sense clinically to look for signs of hypothyroidism in keratoconus? Um, does it make sense to, as a, as a cornea specialist, but even also as a refractive laser surgeon, to mm -hmm. contact your endocrinologist and, and s start screening people or send people to them back and forth? Mm -hmm. um, there is the aspect of keratoconus management, but we also published um, a paper in the American Journal a few months ago where we followed pregnant women throughout pregnancy Mm -hmm. um, topographically and biomechanically by means of uh, Corvus measurements and we started this uh, study a few years ago thinking that we would see a relationship between corneal changes and estrogen well when we analyzed the data there was a direct link between a hormone and the corneal curvature but it was not estrogen it was TSH T3 T4 wow. so even in normal corneas we have mm -hmm. quite distinct changes that relate to thyroid hormone so in the back of my head as a refractive laser surgeon, I want to know whether this has any implication on, on my refractive outcome mm -hmm. or on the occurrence of, of biomechanical changes. So, so it sounds as if now uh, I might borrow a phrase uh, that, that we might say what's old is new again. It sounds like Absolutely. some of this had previously been looked at in the 1930s and 1940s and 1950s, but now with better technology and better imaging, we're able to perhaps answer some of these questions uh, in, in a bit of a, a more accurate or precise manner. Uh, so, so what's old is new. We're, we're sort of learning more about how hormones play a role, but as well, it sounds like more study is needed to find out what the exact implication is. Fully agree. Well, well, thank you so much, Farzad, for explaining this. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. Mm -hmm.